Welcome back everybody. Now Christmas is slowly creeping in and of course many of you is going to want to make a lot of French dessert. And if there is one key skill you need to learn, it is the mastery of making custard. Now custard for many people is just a synonym of that kind of yellowish sweet sauce, but in fact in France it is a super important element that you absolutely need to know. In this video I'm going to give you all the details about what the custard is, how it's made and how to use it with free individual demonstration that's going to allow you to make dozens of desserts for Christmas. Let's go. So what exactly is the core of a custard? What are the components? What are the ingredients used? And let me tell you, it's been a heck of a long time I wanted to make that video because it always amazed me. Custard, this is it. The core of it is in front of you. All what you need is eggs, a little bit of sugar, some milk, and a flavoring of choice. Now, sometimes you can have milk and cream, and remember cream is a byproduct of milk, so you can count it as one ingredient. But roughly speaking, four ingredients represent the most important element of dozens and dozens of French desserts. The amount of things you can make with these ingredients is simply absolutely astonishing. But before we start, I just wanted to put uh, what I'm saying into perspective with a simple picture just to show you the amount of dessert that can be made with this element, okay? Let's look at the screen. I always believe that the picture is worth a thousand words, but it's true that sometimes when you're French, people think you're always exaggerating. So, oh yeah, yeah, that was enough dessert with this. What you see in front of you is a sample of what can be done with the four ingredients I've just showed you. Let's start from the top left here. That cake, you can feel this. Imagine it's a sponge cake filled with layers of pastry cream. The next one with the flan parisien, flan pâtissier, it's a custard pie. The little one next to it is the famous Portuguese tart and with the puff pastry and uh, it are filled with a custard. Ice cream, vanilla ice cream, maybe perhaps you didn't know, it's a custard, that's all it is. The next one, fruit tart filled with pastry cream. Down on the next line, you've got on the left the creme caramel, you know, this pudding and with the caramel on top. This is the one we're going to do, do today without the caramel. I'm going to show you that very easy option. And next to it is the famous creme brulee, of course. Same thing, it's a custard. The Paris Brest is a derivative of a pastry cream with some butter added and some uh, hazelnut flavoring. Floating Islands is there. That's one of the most amazing things because simple. That's going to use the sweet custard we're going to make today. You can also make all kinds of pudding, uh, all kinds of pies and specialty cakes that are filled with custard. You can make like some uh, king cakes or any cakes that you want. And even the croquembouche that you see there, that big pyramid, are shoe pops filled with pastry cream and uh, with extra whipped cream in there, which is called the creme sultane, creme mousseline, etc., etc. So just to tell you how amazing custard is, okay? And that was for the bracket. And now for the demonstration. The first one, we're going to start with the simplest, is the liquid uh, form of custard. This is what you use to make the creme caramel, the creme aux oeufs, like we're going to do here. That is the same without the caramel. It's like a little pudding, a vanilla pudding that you can have. And you can also use this by adding cream in your milk. You can make then a creme brulee if you want, or you can Put that mixture over an apple tart or an apricot tart or a pear tart and cook this in the oven and the whole thing is going to set. It is going to set because we're using the whole egg. And this is the importance in custard that you need to keep in mind. Okay, if you use the whole egg, you got the whites and the yolks. The white is the one thing that's going to make things solid. So anything that has to set, like think of a quiche, for instance. Now you want your mixture to, to imprison the bacon, the, you, know, the, <coughs> you know, the onions, whatever you put in there, your vegetables. You need the egg white. So anything that has to set like a pudding, it's always the full eggs, okay? So let me show you how it's done. Super simple. Step number one, when you make the custard, you need to flavor your milk. So I've got my 250 milliliters of whole milk. That means with full cream. And I'm going to add half a vanilla bean here. I'm going to scrub the seeds and put them in. Heat on, and I'm going to bring this to a simmer. So my milk is warming up slowly. The vanilla is going to diffuse and bring some flavor to the milk. And there's just enough time for me 
to prepare this other element. This is always the same way to make custard. You flavor your milk, you warm it up, and then you're gonna mix your eggs or egg yolks with the sugar. So you see here, you see the amount of egg whites that we have? All of this is gonna be like the same. This one is gonna be helping you having the whole mixture set. So if you've got plenty of eggs, put all of your sugar, and all what you need to do is to mix the whole lot and wait until the sugar has dissolved. And that's, it's called blanchir les oeufs, right? Whiten the mix slightly. So just spend a minute or two or something like this. Okay, we should be done. That's the mixture. It's a bit like an omelette. Okay, and now the milk is ready. I'm gonna grab it. So once you've blended the eggs or the egg yolks with the sugar, you need to pour the warm milk over. The one thing to be careful of is not to pour too much milk at once, otherwise you're gonna curdle or cook the eggs. So the usual practice is that you use a little sieve, you can put a little bit of milk to start with, and you start to mix it in. And that's gonna bring the whole lot to temperature, you're gonna avoid the disaster of having too much temperature going into your eggs at once. Once you've got this, usually, it's fine if you use small quantities like this. It's not a big deal, boom. We're gonna mix the whole lot, and guess what? We are done. Now, anytime you make a custard, you're using a whisk, and you're gonna make things to foam. And this is one of the things you have to be careful. You see, it looks very white, because you need to discard this. So you're gonna use a spoon, I'm with my left hand here to show you, but what you want, it's to discard all of this unwanted foam to reveal the nice yellowish custard under. All done. So to win time, I filtered the custard and I poured it straight into my ramekin. This is called a cremeuse. The creme caramel is the exact same thing with a layer of solidified caramel at the bottom of the ramekin. It is meant to be undished upside down afterward. This one is not. This is the straightforward pudding you can have. You serve it cold, like this, in the ramekin, and that's it. All what we need now is hot water in here. Now when I'm saying warm water, it is actually boiling water, so I've put a kettle on, and I'm gonna fill the water and let it go halfway up the dish, and then put this in the oven at about 160 degrees Celsius for about 30 minutes. So we're done with the first form of custard. Let's move on to the second one, the vanilla custard, the sweet, nice yellowish sauce. The steps are the same. The milk is on the stove as we speak with the vanilla, 250 ml, and it's warming up slowly. Here, I've got 50 grams of sugar, as we had before. But instead of having the whole egg for the sweet vanilla custard, I'm gonna be using two egg yolks instead. So it's still two eggs, and we're gonna blanch the exact same way, okay? And look at this, already a nice pale mix. The milk is warm enough and I've transferred it into a glass container like this because here, because of the egg yolks and the nature of that sauce, you really don't want to kind of have that big blast of heat that could curdle your eggs. So you have to be quite careful with this one. I would advise for the, the creme anglaise, as it's called, the English cream, to really go easy you know, a little bit at a time, and make sure your milk is not boiling hot. Because the intention here is not to have something super thick. Remember, it's just a sauce. So as you can see, I've got the same issue as before. There's some foam, you can try to remove as much as you can, but at the end of the day, what do we have here? Something that looks exactly the same as before. The big difference is now we're gonna cook this differently. We're gonna put this back into the pan and cook that on the stove. So how do we make that sweet vanilla custard? We'll put this back into the pan. And we're gonna cook our cream on a moderate heat, a kind of medium heat. And instead of whisking away, you have to constantly move or stir like this your mixture to avoid that anything starts to stick to the bottom, anything starts to curdle. And this is the secret. But, talking about secrets, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you know, you have to stay like this, keep an eye on it. The best thing you can do when you make a vanilla custard is to use a food thermometer. This is what I mean by a food thermometer. 82 to 83 degrees Celsius, I'll give you the equivalent Fahrenheit after, 
is the temperature at which the egg yolk are going to start to or try to attempt to curdle. So we don't want it to curdle, we just want it to kind of inflate a little so the molecule of eggs are going to kind of get bigger and it gives the impression that you get some kind of thick sauce. But if you go too hot, you end up with an omelet. You know, you get like pieces of eggs everywhere in your milk. So that's not what you want. So the temperature is crucial when you're making a vanilla custard. So I'm going to keep on going. Check my temperature, which is at the moment only at 47, 48. And I'm going to stop precisely at about 82, 83 and show you what it looks like. Takes a bit of time, but we are almost there. The giveaway really, when you reach that kind of 82 mark, you arrive in the 80 degrees Celsius. Can you see the, the pan, how it coats everything in there? It's like a creamy kind of thick stuff. It's trying to stick to the side of the pan. That is now not any more like milk. It's not a liquid. It really starts to be a cream. And it's a sign that it's virtually almost ready now. It is now absolutely ready, nice and thick. Turn the heat off and I'm gonna transfer it immediately into a container. I guess I surely meant a recipient rather than a container, but boom. You're going to do this because you want to capture, there's always little pieces of egg that's going to start to coagulate a little bit. Okay, and that's normal. And but you want this, you want to stop the cooking straight away. And here we are, custard number two. This is the vanilla custard, the sweet custard. Look how it is. This is the consistency and thickness of a real custard. Look at my spoon here. It is coating like mad, okay? If you don't have this, you haven't cooked your custard enough. Very, very important. 82 degrees or even 83 degrees Celsius is the sweet point. You need to leave this to refrigerate in the fridge for at least four hours for the flavors to develop, ideally 12 hours. Do not exceed that time because after that, the flavors actually will start to dissipate. So usually a few hours or up to 12 hours, like the next day, is the best time to eat that lovely sauce. And now let's look at number three. Demonstration number three, the third form of the custard is now the very thick one, like a paste. It is the pastry cream. The milk is on the stove with the vanilla, flavored milk, exactly the same thing. Two egg yolks, same as before, 50 grams of sugar. And now we've got an additional ingredient, so a bit of flour and, and cornstarch to thicken the whole mix. So what we're gonna do, same as before, we're going to put the eggs and sugar, break everything and whisk until it's a little bit pale. All done. So this is exactly what we've done before with the sweet vanilla custard. But here, because we want to really have a thick paste, we're going to add 25 grams. It's a mix of flour and cornstarch that we're going to mix in our egg and sugar mix. Okay, so very gently you're going to mix to have a really thick paste, okay? And that's going to tell you that already we're in for something thick, okay? You can see the consistency there? That's what you need. Same as before, I've already filtered my milk in here and we're going to add a little bit first, not because we're going to cook the egg this time, but because it is such a thick mixture with the flour and the coarse starch that you really want to make sure you grab everything and you don't have any clumps forming in your mixture, okay? A bit like a, like a crepe batter. So the initial step, you take everything, you make sure it's nice and creamy, nice and smooth, and then you continue bit by bit, you're gonna add and you're gonna mix, okay? All right, so we're back on the stove. We're gonna do the exact same thing as with the vanilla custard. I've got all my mixture on here, uh, and I'm gonna pour everything back in. There's really some vanilla at the, at the bottom of the bowl, so make sure you put everything at once like this to get everything in, okay? This is with the heat off, okay? You first put everything in the pan, then, medium heat and a little bit like uh, the vanilla custard we're going to keep on whisking but you're going to see that what's going to happen is totally different so the big difference here you can see i didn't bother with the foam because we really want to cook the eggs for that pastry cream and because we've added flour and coarse starch you can see what's going to happen here i'm going to even reduce the heat a little bit it's going to thicken immediately after a few minutes but much, much thicker than the classic vanilla custard. Okay. So I'm going to wait until this starts to bubble. That means it boils. You need to reach boiling point with that cream. Okay, I'm not there yet. Now, if you can see here, see the bubbles? It's reached boiling point. I'm reducing my heat and I'm going to do another minute on low heat steering constantly and then that's it. 
All done. I'm taking a rubber spatula heat proof. I'm gonna reserve this in a recipient. And here we are. These are the three forms of custard you absolutely must know. Same ingredients, two eggs, 50 grams of sugar, and 250 milliliters of milk combined with a flavoring of choice. Here was the vanilla bean, okay? And as you can see, three different results. The first one using all egg, the whole egg, the egg white solidifies the mixture. And here, you see, you're getting a pudding. I keep on eating it. You see, boom, you get a vanilla pudding. That's delicious, okay? You ditch the egg white. You transform your custard into a semi-liquid kind of form. We've part cooked it over the stove and the egg yolks have part cooked and you got a delicious sauce you can use with cakes or anything. This is also the base to make ice cream, by the way. The third one, the pastry cream, is when you want to use this as a filling for cakes, for shoe puffs, for anything like that. You add some flour, some cornstarch, and look at this. This is really, really thick, but this is yummy. You put this into an eclair or a chupa for even some cakes. Oh, it's really, really good. But anyway, that completes what I wanted to uh, tell you about this custard before Christmas. Very important. Master these three ways. Same ingredients, super simple technique, and you can make lots and lots of desserts. I will add some links in the video description to some older video that I've got. Uh, on how to make dessert based on this, but what I would advise is to check our dessert course where we have a whole chapter on custard and you're gonna get new videos with, you know, good angle, recipe cards, all the supporting materials, all the explanation, plus lots of other dessert. Now, if you're in into learning that stuff, go for the course. If you're just randomly passing by, check some of the links, okay? That's it for me. I'll leave you with this array of custard and I'll see you all next week for another video. Take care all. Bye-bye.